Hi there, this is Max from Iridescent Color, and today I've got another exciting new tool for you. This one is called Hue Compressor, and it has applications both in shot by shot grading and look design. And I would say, let's dive straight into it and look at a couple of different use cases. So the way you can think about this tool is essentially you define a hue center that acts like a magnetic field that pulls adjacent hues towards it so that you compress the hues into a smaller space. And in this shot, for example, we could use this to even out the skin tone. So you can see we have slightly blotchy skin. There's like more reddish parts here and more yellowish parts here. And if we kind of want to even this blotchiness out a little bit, we could use this tool to do it. And I will show you how this functions. Let's turn the highlight mode first. And the first thing I would want to do here, this is automatically always set up to a skin tone-ish kind of vector, is I want to bring down the radius so that we really only affect our skin tones here. And if I can, if I play around with the target hue, I feel like this is a point where we get good hold of the skin tones here. So I'm going to turn this off and then just turn up the strength and see what happens. And very quickly, as we can also see here on the vector scope, we're pulling tones around the skin tone line towards the skin tone line so that we get just a closer variance within that range. And I think without adjusting anything further, I really like the difference that makes in the skin tone. It's probably subtle over YouTube, but it just feels like now these skin tones all live in a little bit more of a similar vector. And we can adjust this a little bit more. Maybe this is too orange and we want it to be a little bit more on the yellowish side so we can pull it to the right. And I think around here looks really good for that shot. I can turn this off and on. And I would definitely say that for this shot, this is probably too much. Um, so I would probably pull it back a little bit, but somewhere around 0 0.5, 0 0.6, I feel like we get a very natural result of much more even skin tones with very little effort. And this is the first use case for this tool. The second use case I want to look at today is um, using this more as a look tool, as a creative look tool. And in this case, let's have a look at Isabella. I've got it set up so that we go into linear before we apply this tool. And very often I find if I make big adjustments like that, that the hue adjustments just look a tiny bit better and linear and a bit more perceptually kind of accurate and natural and linear as opposed to log. And if you would do this on a timeline level, there's a couple of extra things you need to be aware of, but I'm gonna talk about those in an extra video to keep this one short. So let's just have a look at how this tool works if we want to look, use it for look creation. And in this case, I'm gonna use this complementary mode here. And what this means is that if we turn it up, as you can see, now we're pulling all of these hues kind of closer together along a complementary axis. So we've got the skin tones here, and then we've got these complementary kind of cyan tones. And I really like the kind of preferential palette that I get from that. Now all of the skin tones live in a more even out vector. And on the other hand, our blues feel a little bit more cyan. And this might feel very filmic or at least create a sort of preferential color palette that can look really beautiful. Um, another thing we can do here is we can use this second skew slider to skew the hue targets. And I'm going to turn the hue targets on here. So now you can see all of my hues kind of fall along the, uh, an axis between these two hues. But let's say I want these cyans to be even more on the greener side. I can just use this slider to pull them to the left and get a more greenish cyan rendering. Or I can do the opposite and I can say I want them to be a little bit more bluish and then I can pull this to the right. And you can see on the vector scope how that affects my distribution of hues. Uh, the other thing I'm noticing here that I want to draw attention to is in this case, if we use this at full strength with full radius, we get kind of relatively desaturated greens because they're getting pulled towards kind of orange and towards cyan at the same time. And so they end up kind of grayish. And one thing we can do is again, we can use this highlight mode to just lower the radius a little bit. And now you can see we're kind of excluding the greens a little bit more from that adjustment. And if I turn this off again, now you can see that we're not touching the greens 
quite as much. Maybe we can pull this back even further. And right around here, I really like the natural result that I get. And this is a really beautiful color palette. Um, another option that you have here is we can go even further and say, I like the way this looks overall, but now my problem is that my reds feel too orange, especially here, the lips feel like they too, have too much of that skin tone. And I can use this symmetry. And if I pull this to the right, I'm basically lowering the radius only on the left side of my target hue. So I'm getting a little bit less of the red into my hue selection. And if I turn this off again, now you can see that we are we're affecting the red less um, while we're affecting the yellow just as much as before. Um, on the other hand, if we do the opposite, you can see now we're really affecting the yellow, but we, sorry, masking the yellow from that adjustment, but we maintain that adjustment in the reds. Using these sliders, you can get very nuanced adjustments to your image. And uh, I really like to play around with this and just kind of create uh, a sort of color palette that I like. We can look how this looks on different shots. Um, I really like this uh, Stefan Ringelschwandner's um, Lego shot for this. I hope he doesn't mind me using this. But as you can see here, you can really tell how this reshapes the colors in your image. And again, if we turn up the radius and turn down the symmetry here, you can see you can get a, almost like a, a, a retro vintage feeling color palette that's very restricted to certain complementary hues. Here's another shot where we can really see how this color palette affects the reds a little bit too much and the lips feel a little bit too orangey and skin tony maybe. And again, we can just use the symmetry slider here and pull it to the right to still get that strong adjustments that pulls the yellows towards orange uh, without losing the reds here. And then we can turn down the radius a little bit more as well. And around there, I really like how this reshapes the hues in our image in a very natural and subtle looking way. But we're not limited to two target hues. We can also use the triadic mode here. And if I turn this on, you can see now we've got three targets that are kind of in a triangle. You can see here's our three target hues. And what I like to do here, for example, I use a green, like a, a perfect 120 degrees green as my first target hue. And then my second target hue will be a perfect blue and my third will be a perfect red. And now I want to move this red more towards a skin kind of vector. And then I'm just going to turn this on and uh, I'm going to have to adjust my skin tones a little bit more. But I really like what we get now. We get relatively neutral skin tones, but we get very primary greens and blues. And it's a very interesting kind of... It's a very interesting kind of look. I can turn down the radius and the strength just a little bit to not overdo this adjustment. But I think there's something really appealing about the way that this renders some um, foliage very, very green and blues very blue. And we get a very primary feel while this third skew slider allows us to preserve the skin tones from getting too red and... Uh, yeah, I think I want to pull it back ever so slightly. And as you can see, all of these things are very subtle, but they allow you to really reshape the color palette in your image to get very different looks very quickly. Um, we can have a look at a couple of other shots to see. And this one is very interesting. You can really see how that blue and that green turn a lot more primary, while the red kind of gets a little bit warmer and that is just a side effect of that skin tone compression. But our skin tones re remain relatively neutral. They maybe have a slight push towards red, but we can live with that in this case. And um, I think it's really, it's really a very intuitive tool to use. You can really see how the hues that you select as your targets correspond with what you see in the image. You get a very strong kind of representation of this pure green and this pure blue. And then you also get a lot of these orangey colors. Um, if I use the complementary again, you can really see if I turn this all the way up, you get all of these very, um, you get a very close alignment between the target hues that you select here and then the hues that appear in your image. And that was just a quick overview over the tool. I hope you found this useful and interesting. If you have any more questions, feel free to comment or drop me an email. 
And as promised, I will make a longer video as well where I go a little bit more into detail on what to be aware of when using this as a look tool, especially if you use it in linear. And uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again very, very soon.